Belgium is an interesting country that is personally surprising to me that it still stands strong in the 21st century. Also, if you want to taste great waffles, this country is your sure go. But well, Belgium's existence is actually shaped, forged, and threatened by its neighbors at different times. But before that, let us see what this country is first, shall we? The Kingdom of Belgium, a country located in northwestern Europe, is one of the smallest and most densely populated European countries, with around 11 billion people. Its capital and largest city is Brussels, which is also the administrative center of the European Union. But Belgium is not like any other typical European country. You see, Belgium doesn't have a single unified population with the same language and culture, unlike those in the other Euro countries. Instead, Belgium is divided into three different regions. Flanders, where most of the population speak Dutch or Flemish as known locally. Wallonia, where it is mostly French instead and the Brussels capital region, which hosts obviously the capital. Also, as mentioned earlier, Dutch and French are the dominant languages in the country, which hold official status, but they, these are sharply divided into these regions. Additionally, there are also some German speakers in the east of the country, but why? Well, let's see Belgium's neighbors. Belgium borders four countries, Netherlands to the north, adjacent to the Dutch-speaking Flemish region, France to the south, the same goes for Walloon region, Germany to the east, and Luxembourg to the southeast. Now this should be clear how Belgium's population looks like. Generally, Belgium has a flat geography and is a pretty prosperous nation. But let us explain how Belgium managed to survive for such a long time with such a diverse population. Well, let's look at its, each neighboring country and how they dictated Belgian history. Belgium's immediate neighbor to the north is the Netherlands, in which today, they get along pretty well. However, the Dutch had always kept their eye on Belgium because it houses a huge Dutch-speaking population in Flanders. Looking back history, both Netherlands and Belgium were united under Habsburg rule, although the Dutch revolted and went their own ways. But Belgium remained under Habsburg rule, although the French annexed it during its revolution. After the defeat of Napoleon, both the Netherlands and Belgium were once again part of the same country under the United Kingdom of the Netherlands. However, the French-speaking Catholic population in the south revolted due to the cultural and religious intolerance by its Dutch and Protestant king, William I. With the support of the French, the Belgians successfully seceded in 1830, although William I wouldn't accept this until 9 years later. One note to think of, much of northern Belgium is still populated by Dutch-speaking population and there have been talks for secession and eventually joining the Netherlands. However, this has never been materialized and the concept of the Flemish secession isn't as widely popular. But this concept still exists today and could threaten the very existence of Belgium as a whole. Today, both nations are very diplomatically close. They share very close cultural and economic ties. Along with Luxembourg, they form a political economic union called Benelux, in which these three countries are more integrated with each other and this makes cooperation easier. Can be seen as one of the closest international relationships in existence, marked by shared history, culture, institutions, and language, aligned security interests, sporting tournaments, and vibrant trade and investment cooperation. But still, the scars of history still remain and will stay as the status quo goes on. Side note. 
One thing interesting about these two countries is that their border has one area that is quite wacky. The border within the town of Barl Nassau in the Netherlands, in which it borders Belgium, is perhaps Europe's strangest border anomaly, in which Barl Nassau is home to more than 20 Belgian exclaves some of which contain Dutch exclaves inside. It's a place where a person might be in the same bed as his or her spouse but sleep in totally different countries. Belgium's eastern neighbor is Germany, a massive powerhouse. And obviously Belgium is Germany's favorite invasion route to France during the world wars because flat geography and better to fight there than at home. Also, their flags look quite similar. Dating back in history, Belgium was part of the Holy Roman Empire along with Germany until France got revolutionary and did revolutionary things. When Belgium got its independence, its first king was Leopold I, who was a German and hailed from an aristocratic family of Saxe Coburg and Gotha. All Belgian kings until the present stem from his lineage. Obviously, as mentioned earlier, Germany invaded and cross into Belgium to get into France through the Schlieffen plan, but the Brits got upset and the rest is history. During World War II, Germany did the same thing and it was successful, capitulating France, but Germany then attacked the USSR, a bad idea, and the Third Reich was over after years of fighting. Today though, both Germany and Belgium have generally friendly relations and they cooperate on a higher level. Interestingly, Belgium has a small German-speaking population in the East taken at the end of World War I and it is considered a federal political community with its own parliament and government. Additionally, German is also an official language at the national level. And as of today, they're pretty cool with each other. Belgium has a smaller neighbor southeast, which is Luxembourg. Luxembourg and Belgium have very close relations, as they were ruled by the Habsburgs and eventually the French. After the defeat of Napoleon, Luxembourg was the Grand Duchy with William I as its duke which was also the king of the Netherlands, putting both countries in a personal union. During the Belgian revolt, Luxembourg supported the Belgians, but during the peace treaty at London in 1839, Luxembourg lost a chunk of its territory to the newly independent Belgium. At that time, until the end of World War I, it was economically integrated with the German world as it was part of the German Confederation and later the Sovereign a German customs union. After World War I, as the German Empire collapsed, Luxembourg sought to integrate with its Belgian neighbor. The Belgium-Luxembourg Economic Union was created as a treaty in 1921, but eventually it would become a forerunner to the Benelux Union. Today, these two countries remain economically and diplomatically integrated. Belgium's southwestern neighbor is that of France. France and the southern regions of Belgium, mostly Wallonia, are culturally and linguistically integrated. French is one of the official languages of Belgium, but there is also a Walloon language, which is quite more distinct from the French. Fun fact, the so-called French fries may have originated from the French-speaking region of Belgium instead. Belgium and France have a long history of being neighbors, and as a part of the Habsburg crown, France has sought to expand its territory, but it culminated during the French Revolution when all of Belgium was annexed into France. France lost the Napoleonic Wars and couldn't keep Belgium, 
but it supported its revolt against the Netherlands. Britain couldn't allow France to just partition it or make it an ally or protect it because France can't have nice things according to Britain and Belgian neutrality was guaranteed by Britain. This had long-lasting consequences as Germany would invade through neutral Belgium to bypass French fortifications along its border. Despite this, Belgium and France are culturally and economically integrated. Belgium is part of the Organisation Internationale de la Francophonie. I'm not sure if you're pronouncing this French word correctly, but this is basically a group of Francophone countries in which ling the lingua franca or the main language is French and has interrelations with French culture and both have great diplomatic relations. Belgium has some distant neighbors that played a role in its existence. The most notable one is Britain. Things were pretty blurry at the wake of its independence, in which Belgian independence could upset the balance of power in favor of the French. But eventually, it was agreed that Britain will recognize Belgian independence, but it will be strictly and permanently neutral in foreign diplomacy, and Britain will guarantee that. But as history dictated, the German Empire invaded Belgium, and this brought Britain into the World War I. Due to the guarantee. During World War II, many Belgians, including its government, sought refuge in Britain. Today, relations are relatively cool, despite the whole Brexit thing. Belgium has an interesting but somewhat not so delightful relationship with its former colony, the Democratic Republic of the Congo or DRC. Despite keeping ties and having a shared link of Franca, the reign of Leopold II, Congo was his personal property, not Belgium, and his absolute atrocities against the Congolese people in the DRC, then called Congo Free State, really left an everlasting scar. Even though the DRC was not crafted by Belgium in the very beginning, its already forced borders and geography aggravated by Leopold II's ruthless rule doomed it to become a third world and poor country, but still both countries still have diplomatic and economic ties. Despite being historically neutral, the demand and momentum for neutrality ended after World War II, in which much of Western world allied against the communist East. Brussels has been chosen de facto capital of the European Union effectively allowing for all EU countries to cooperate and establish ties with Belgium. Belgium is also a NATO member, establishing close relations with the United States. To conclude, Belgium is a country that may seem doomed to fail due to its division. However, due to its unique position as a buffer state between France and Germany, center of European integration, and the fact that most of the people living there see themselves as Belgian. It has survived and it is surviving. Belgium is a nation that is dictated by its neighbors and its very continuous existence has been shaped by internal and external factors. I hope you enjoyed it and please like and subscribe for more country neighbors.